Last year we did a video called Dis Dying for Newbies where we attempted to dye two discs for the first time using the shaving cream method. The results were surprisingly good, but there was still some room left for improvement. Since then, we've been wanting to give disc dyeing another shot, but this time with some better materials and techniques to hopefully get some better results. So today on Justice, it's time for Disc Golf Dying for Newbies Part 2. So let's get into it. For this disc golf dye, we're gonna be using the lotion dye technique where we use cocoa butter instead of shaving cream and we use the pro chemical in dye instead of the RIT dye more because we heard that the lotion dye mix is one of the best disc golf dyeing techniques. It breeds some of the best results and it's also just easier to move around, easier to handle. Now, of course, before we get started, let us just tell you what you're gonna to need to do this yourself. The first thing you'll need are a few bottles of cocoa butter lotion. Now, we have heard about this Queen Helene's cocoa butter. There's a lot of disc golf dyer pros out there who swear by it. They say it gives the best result, but we couldn't find it. So our alternative that we found at Walmart was the Equate Cocoa Butter Lotion. The second thing you'll need are some colored dyes to color your discs. So we're using Pro Chemical and Dye Powder. We got this kind of multi-colored pack from True North where it gives you small amounts just so you can have a diverse range of colors to use. The third thing you'll need are some dispensing plastic bottles to mix the dye with the lotion. Now the ones that we have are a little large. We got them at Ikea. They're really meant for cooking. You can probably get half the size if you don't want to have to use Use as much dye. The fourth thing you'll need is something to dye your disc in. So for us this time we decided to buy a plate just to maybe see if it gives a better result because the pie tray we used last time it was a bit finicky it moves around it just wasn't ideal for what we were trying to do. The fifth thing you'll need is a tool to just move around the dye. So coffee sticks, uh, a straw, a pencil even. We found this metal tool that we used to build something with that we don't need anymore that might do the trick. The sixth thing you'll need is a little bit of water. Now we've I've heard a lot of people talk about using a little bit of acetone to get the dye to stick better to the disc, but if you do use acetone or water, you really just need a little bit so that you can switch around and mix the dye so that it mixes better with the lotion. The seventh thing you'll need is something to scoop the dye and put it into the bottles. We have this one quarter tablespoon, which is what they recommend. For the smaller bottles, you usually only need one scoop. For the bigger, maybe two. It all depends, but we'll talk about that shortly. Now, the eighth thing you'll need, not a necessity, but some old towels to clean up any kind of mess, wipe your hands, avoid any kind of spilling, and maybe some gloves if you don't like getting those hands dirty. The ninth thing you're going to need is a premium plastic disc. If you don't know the difference between base and premium, we do have a video for that. But for us, we're using the Philo Brathwaite Star Destroyer. It's in white, so it's going to show the colors the best. And the tenth and final thing you'll need is simply your creativity. Go in with a plan, get a design in mind, and with colors, try to choose colors on the similar part of the spectrum. Don't try and use colors that are really opposite because that's how you get those browns and really those ugly colors that you're not looking for. So now that you know all the tools required, it's time to get started. So step one is going to be to make sure that your disc that you're using is nice and clean. If you don't like the emblem on it, you can use a magic eraser with some water. Just rub it gently and it should come off. But if you got a beat up disc, make sure you give it a good scrub before applying any dyes. For the second step, you're going to fill the tray with some cocoa butter. Make sure that it is cocoa butter. The point of using lotion is it's supposed to just spread out nicely. I think that's why a lot of the professionals use the uh, Queen Helene's. I think it has the right consistency so that it kind of just lays beautifully flat and it's a little bit easier to get rid of those air bubbles. Again, if your lotion is not moving at all, you may need to add a little bit of water to kind of get it moving so it can settle a little bit better. Yes, nice. You can see kind of when you hit down to some of those air bubbles coming up. So I think what I'm going to do here is now I've mixed it pretty well, it's getting pretty flat. I'm gonna let that settle for a little bit, but let's get to how to mix the dye with the lotion bottles to get your desired colors. Now we ended up already mixing this yellow one and we also mixed the green one, but the green is like a fern and it's very dark. We're really afraid it's gonna create some kind of ugly brown. So we're not gonna use that. And we're gonna mix two more bottles in orange as well as a pinkish red. So we'll show you how to go about mixing with what we have. All right, so we got it's nice orange, so we got this one quarter tablespoon right here. It's very fine, it kind of gets everywhere is what I hear, so uh, just be very careful with it, measure correctly. It's a very strong chemical, so there we are, we're gonna put one. Normally that's enough if you're using a smaller bottle. For us, we're just gonna do two, just in case. We just wanna make sure we have enough color in there. We don't want it to be kind of very faded and ugly. And we're gonna add just a little bit of water. Okay, touch more. 
that should be pretty good right there. So kind of switch that around a little bit. So we're gonna put you know, quite a bit in, don't be shy. Again, we filled it to about about halfway you know, after mixing it. We'll see what that, what that kind of gives us. This is that orange, ooh, it's looking kind of nice. And so with this stuff that's left on the bottom, what I like to do is I like to take one of those coffee, coffee sticks and kind of go and move it around the bottom because you want to just kind of get it so that it displaces from the bottom and is able to mix. Shaking it quite a bit. I think it's a good mix now. So now we got our orange and our yellow. We'll obviously shake them one more time before we start applying the dye. All right, so now let's do the next one. We're going with that pinkish red. Really interested to see kind of how this comes out. Yeah, pinkish red. If there's any grains left from the last scoop, make sure you dump that out. Two one quarter tablespoons here, just because of the size of the bottle. Looks pretty good. Again, this is a bit of trial and error with me. I hear people using acetone. I'm just using water here. And we're obviously looking for a consistency that's similar to paint. At least that's kind of my understanding from watching a lot of the videos. Lovely. Dying is a lot of fun. Once you get everything set up, you get your colors and it's just about dying. That's Obviously the fun part, where the fun begins. All right, so it's now time to begin the dyeing process. We have our tray here filled with cocoa butter. We let it sit for a little bit. We're gonna bang it down again just to kind of get rid of a few more of those air bubbles. You can see it's not perfectly flat. Um, perhaps this has to do with the lotion. We did add a little bit of extra water to kind of get it to smooth itself out. Uh, perhaps, you know, you wanna wait a few hours and then come back and you'll see it'll be kind of a little bit more flat than mine. But I think we're just gonna, we're gonna give this a shot. So the dye that I looked up online and that I found was pretty cool and something that I feel that I could do is the typical flower dye. All right, let's just kind of start the process. When you're done adding the color, we also heard to just kind of get those air bubbles out again, really kind of hit it against the table. Also gets the ink to be just a little bit more flat. So for the flower technique, never done this technique before, but what I hear is you start from the middle and you make these kind of waves all the way around. So we go down like this and that's okay. So we take the disc, see a lot of people kind of holding it like this, put it down, put it down beautifully flat. Now obviously you try to do the best that you can. That's it, I mean, what else am I gonna do? You just put it down. See, that looks pretty sweet. Mm-hmm. Just making sure it's going all the way around the edge. That's probably the most important part or it looks kind of amateur. Looking pretty good, pretty excited about this dye. We'll wait 24 hours and we're gonna see how this disc turns out. So we're gonna take it off. Okay. And let's just get to wash and here we go. Hmm. Hmm. Whoa. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, this looks pretty great. Oh man, a little little white streak, a couple little white streaks. Man. All right, so after cleaning up the disc, what do we think? Well, we think it looks incredible and we hope you think the same. This dyeing method with the cocoa butter as well as the ProChem dye seems to work very well. And there's a reason why people say it's one of the best ways to go about dyeing your disc. We definitely wonder if the acetone would have made it just a little bit more vibrant or maybe leaving it a little bit longer or even mixing it with some worm dip because we heard worm dip mixed with ProChem dye can give some very vibrant colors. Either way, it looks great. Let us know if you're gonna try this yourself. Let us know what you think of this disc golf dye. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, you know exactly what to do. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Merci beaucoup et à bientôt.